Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about some late season hunting strategies. I know that there are a lot of hunters out there, myself included, that still have tags to fill. And during the late season, there are a few things that you can key on to really increase your chances of accomplishing your hunting goals. And when I say late season, I'm referring more towards the end of the primary rut. So later in November, throughout December, and if your state has hunting throughout January, you know, January as well. So after the pre-rut, after the rut, getting more into that post-rut, second rut time period when we're talking about late season hunting. And just like we do with most of our strategy videos, if we wanna have greater hunting success, we really want to try to figure out what the deer are doing during this time of the year. And for the most part, and this is going to vary based on where you're at, but the deer during the late season, they're really starting to transition into survival mode. And there are a few reasons for this. The first is that the habitat is changing drastically. With the light diminishing day by day and those late summer, early fall food sources starting to go dormant, the deer herd recognizes this as most of them have been through previous winters and they really start to shift towards winter survival mode. Again, they know that those food sources are going dormant. There's not gonna be as much food available throughout the winter months. So they need to conserve energy to give themselves the best chance of surviving those harsh winter months. So as a hunter, you need to recognize these changes that are taking place in the deer woods and adjust your strategy accordingly. And the first thing that I wanna talk about during the late season is that a lot of these deer are getting back to those bedding areas very early in the morning and they're staying there for a majority of the day. So as a hunter, if you're pushing into those bedding areas early in the morning, there's a decent chance that those deer are already going to be in there and you're gonna push them out. So during the late season, for the most part, I typically don't focus on those early morning bedding area sits. Again, because there's a really good chance that those deer are already back in those bedding areas, especially on those really cold days. But just like at any time during the season, it is extremely important to figure out where these deer are bedding so you can give yourself a better opportunity by placing yourself in a stand either in between bedding areas or in between bedding and food. And there are four bedding area locations that you guys should be focusing on during the late season. And for the most part, these deer are bedding in these particular locations for the same reason. It's just gonna depend on the weather that particular day. And again, it goes back to the deer are in survival mode during the late season. The first bedding area location that you wanna be keying on during the late season would be your solar bedding areas. These are bedding areas that are facing the south, so they get good southerly exposure from the sun. The deer are gonna be hanging out on these south facing slopes to try to take in as much sunlight as they can to stay as warm as they can. Keeping your body warm burns a lot of energy, so anything the deer herd can do to conserve that energy and get extra warmth, they're going to do it. So if you have a day where it's not very windy, the sun is out, there's not a cloud in the sky, and you have a south facing slope, there's a decent chance that you're gonna have deer bedded on that south facing slope so they can stay warm and again, conserve energy. Keeping with the same theme of deer bedded on hillsides, the second bedding area location that you guys should be keying on during the late season is the leeward side of a hill. This is the side of the hill that the deer are going to be using to get out of the wind. Again, they're trying to conserve as much energy as possible. And by getting out of the wind, this can greatly reduce the energy that the deer herd needs to burn to stay warm. And just to give you guys a real world example of this, think about any time you have to shovel your driveway in January or February. The, the actual temperature might be 25, but the, the wind is gusting you know, at 20, 30 miles an hour sometimes. In that wind chill is gonna drop the feels like temperature sometimes down to you know, 15 or, or, or 10 degrees. So depending on how strong the wind is, that can really make the temperature feel much colder than it actually is. And that's why those deer on those really windy days, those really cold days, they're gonna be hanging out on the leeward side of the hillside. 
Again, they're in survival mode. They want to stay as warm as possible to conserve as much energy as possible. So make sure to keep those two things in mind as you're trying to find out where these deer are bedding during the late season. During those sunny days, those calm days, there's a good chance those deer are going to be hanging out on those south facing slopes. But during those really cold windy days, look for those deer to be bedded on the leeward side of the hill. It doesn't really matter what the wind direction is, there's a good chance those deer are going to be hanging out again on the leeward side of the hill. Another bedding area location that you guys should be focusing on during the late season, and again, we're gonna be focusing on deer staying warm to conserve energy, are those pockets of thermal cover. Whether that's a cedar thicket, whether that's a pocket of spruce trees, when it's really cold outside, when we're getting a lot of snow, those deer are gonna to gravitate towards those thermal pockets in order to stay warm. When you have clusters of conifers together, again, whether that's a cedar thicket, a bunch of spruce trees planted together, white pines, that location is gonna be a few degrees warmer than the surrounding area. And I know a few degrees doesn't sound like much, but to a deer herd that's trying to conserve as much energy as they can to get through the harsh winter months, that few degrees is gonna really help them conserve energy. So during those really cold days, when, especially when you get a lot of snow, those deer are gonna to gravitate towards those thermal pockets. Not only are those locations warmer than the surrounding area, but those cedar thickets, those spruce plantings, those white pine plantings, they hold their needles all year long. And that also helps to shield the deer from the wind to help keep them warmer. The last bedding area location that you guys should be focusing on during the late season also has to do with the deer herd going into survival mode just for a different reason. And that bedding area would be very thick, high stem count, secure cover. And the reason that they're focusing on and gravitating towards this type of cover during the late season is because they've been hunted hard for the past two months. The deer herd can sense hunting pressure, and as it builds from the start of bow season and then maxes out during the gun opener in each state, the deer are gonna start retreating to that really thick cover. They know that these areas, whether it's a thick, nasty swamp or, or an autumn olive or a multiflora rose thicket, there's not a whole lot of hunting pressure in those locations. So as the hunting pressure increases throughout the season, the deer herd is gonna gravitate more towards that really thick, high stem count cover. Here in Michigan, and I don't have the numbers for this year, but last year, 2020, we had over 600,000 hunters. And I would say most of those hunters participated in the firearm opener on November 15. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the local deer herd, and it's gonna drastically change their patterns. Again, because of the massive increase in hunting pressure, these deer are going to look for either unpressured ground if it's available, or they're gonna to try to find that really thick, high stem count cover where most hunters do not want to push into. So again, during the late season, if you're having a hard time finding deer, try to focus on those four different bedding area locations, whether that's a solar bedding area, those south facing slopes, or it's sticking with trying to stay warm, the leeward side of a hill during those really windy days, or those thermal bedding areas, those, those cedar swamps, those spruce plantings, or if you're in a really high pressure area with a lot of hunters, and you know that there was a lot of pressure, especially post firearm opener, look for that really, really thick, high stem count cover that most hunters don't wanna be in, and you're gonna have a really good chance of finding deer. Now, if you're someone who's still looking to put a tag on one of those local bucks, the late season is a great time to do so. For the most part, those bucks start getting back to those early season patterns, that bed to feed pattern. Over the past month, these bucks have been chasing and tending does every single day, fighting off rival bucks. They've been running and fighting nonstop for the past month, and this has taken a lot out of them. I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but some bucks might lose up to 25% of their body weight from all the searching, chasing, and fighting that takes place during the rut. So because these bucks are so worn down and because they know that the harsh winter is right around the corner, they know that they need to start replenishing those fat reserves to give themselves the best chance at surviving the winter months. And again, this makes them much more predictable as they get back to that bed to feed pattern. So if you have late season food plots on your property, whether that's a brassica blend, cereal grains, if you have standing soybeans, if you have standing corn, 
The deer herd and especially those bucks are going to be hitting these food sources hard during the late season, again, to replenish those fat reserves. Now I will say this, I would be focusing on those late season food sources that are located next to those late season bedding areas that we talked about earlier. If you have a late season food source that's 400 yards away from one of those late season bedding areas, there's a good chance that those deer are gonna be hanging in that bedding area until dark and then moving towards that food source. But if you can find a food source that's right next to one of those late season bedding areas, whether that's thermal cover or just really thick high stem count cover, then those are the food sources that I would be focusing on. Again, during the late season, there is a lot of human pressure, especially after those gun openers and the deer herd recognizes that. And they do not want to expose themselves by walking 200, 300 yards through open hardwoods to get to a food source. They're gonna be hanging back in those bedding areas and they might pop out just before dark. And if you're sitting on that food source that's 200 yards away, there's a good chance that you're not gonna be seeing anything. However, if you're sitting near a food source that's relatively close to those late season bedding areas, then you have a much greater chance of catching daylight deer activity. Again, the local deer herd, and especially those bucks, are going to be trying to gain the weight back that they lost during the rut. So hunting those late season food sources during the afternoon is a great strategy during the late season. Another late season strategy that I really like to focus on every year, and it, it's short lived, but it's a good one, is taking advantage of the second rut or the breeding that takes place in early December. Every single year, there is a second round of breeding that takes place, the second rut, and this takes place about 28 days after the primary rut. And the amount of breeding that takes place is gonna depend on a few different things, the, the number of does you have, the number of fawns that you have. But make no mistake, there will be a second round of breeding that's taking place, a second rut that you can take advantage of on your property. Again, depending on the amount of does you have on your property, the, the buck to doe ratio, if you have a lot of does on your property and not very many bucks, there's a good chance that not every single one of those does is gonna be bred during the primary rut. The does that were not bred during the primary rut are gonna come into a second estrus cycle about 28 days after their first one. Along with those does coming into their second estrus cycle, you're going to also have those doe fawns that are gonna be coming into their first estrus cycle as long as they're at the correct body weight. So even if you do a good job of managing your does on your property and you have a pretty equal buck to doe ratio and most of your does were bred during the primary rut, you're still going to have those doe fawns coming into estrus for the first time, kicking off that second rut. And for the most part, we really don't hunt the second rut any differently than we hunt the primary rut. We try to get on the downwind side of those known bedding areas. We try to get into those pinch points in between bedding areas and bedding and food. We are still trying to get close to those doe family groups because we know that where those does are, that's where those bucks are going to be. One thing I will say when you're trying to hunt that second rut is you make sure you know where those does are. A lot has happened since the primary rut. Again, there's been a lot of pressure in the deer woods. Most states gun openers have taken place. Again, the Orange Army, 500, 600,000 hunters have hit the woods. That's gonna change the deer's patterns. So you need to try to make sure that you're doing a good job of finding out where those deer have shifted to, if they've shifted at all, because you wanna make sure that you're hunting where those does are now, not where they were a month ago, because you better believe that that buck, he's not gonna be checking where those does were a month ago. He's going to be where they are now. And as far as when the second rut is taking place, it's going to take place at the same time on your property every single season, just like the primary rut. But the second rut takes place about 28 days after that primary rut. On the properties that we hunt here in mid-Michigan, we start to notice that those older bucks are back on their feet searching anywhere from December 3rd to December 7th. So it's not a very big window, but it is fairly consistent every single year that from December 3rd to December 7th, and it might change a little bit depending on the weather, those older bucks are back on their feet during daylight searching for does. And based on the intel that we've gathered from running trail cameras over the past 10 years, along with personal observation, most of the buck movement that we see during the second rut is taking place from the late morning to midday. 
So again, that means you most likely do not need to be in your stand well before daylight. And I would say it's okay to get to your stand a little bit later, maybe around 7.30 to eight o'clock to try to capture that late morning to midday buck movement that takes place during the second rut. So along with trying to capitalize on those late season feeding patterns as a majority of the deer herd is trying to bulk up for the winter months, trying to capitalize on the second rut is another great strategy during the late season. And just like throughout the rest of the hunting season, we really like to hunt post cold front during the late season. If you have a nasty storm go through and you have a lot of snow come down, there's a really good chance that you're gonna see a lot of deer movement as they're moving to those late season food sources on the backside of that cold front. Well guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up on today's video on late season hunting strategies. If you guys have any additional tips, I'd love to hear about them. Or if you guys have any questions, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can. And we will see you guys in the next video.